Amen. Amen. And uh, that's a powerful thing. And so, and so I, I just tell you, my heart for you today is, I don't want you out on the fringes of Christianity. Am I right? I want you to walk with Him and talk with Him and hear Him tell you that you're His own. I want you to know Him. I want you to know His Word. I want you to be really connected to Jesus. You say, well, how can I do that? Here's what James 4, 8 says, Come near to God and He will come near to you. All you've got to do is get closer to God every day. Take a step towards Him. He'll take a step towards you. In fact, did you know the word abide is actually a command? He tells us ten times in just six verses, He says, remain, abide, stay connected. That's the, that's the key to life. You say, well, Pastor, I really want a better marriage. Uh, let me tell you what you got to do. Abide in Jesus, all right? You say, well, I'd like for my family to just have a lot of laughter around the kitchen table and a lot of joy in the family. Listen, abide in Him. Him. Amen. You say, well, I want my ministry to take off. I want to serve others. I just need the Lord to help me. Listen, abide in Him. It's your connection that brings fruit. Come on. Now, there's a reason why some people just settle for a smaller connection. All right? A little fruit. The reason is because they are really unsure of their relationship with the Lord in a way. And if you're going to abide, do I got any people who say, I really want to abide? I want to be the branch connected. Here's what you got to do you really have to understand God's love for you. I mean, let's get down to the truth today, all right? Some people aren't convinced of it even yet. Now, God loved you when you were still out in sin. Did you know that? Am I right? Did God love you when you were out at the club or doing whatever you were doing? I don't know. Uh, whenever you were uh, out there and you were lost and you needed Jesus and you didn't believe in Him and you didn't trust it in Him, did God love you then? How many of you say, yeah, He did? Right? I can prove it to you because Romans 5, 8 says God demonstrates His love toward us in that while we were still sinners, He died for us. If he died for you, then what makes you think that now that you're a, a child of God, he doesn't love you? Of course, he loves you, right? And we've got to become convinced of that. I'll never forget a discussion I had with a guy. And uh, he was one of the most intelligent men I think I've ever had the privilege of pastoring. I mean, this guy was so smart, but yet sometimes his logic was so flawed. And I can even tell you the place where we met. We were eating lunch. And, and he said this to me. I'll never forget it. He said, the only reason why God loves me is because he said he would. And I know that God is a, such a person of character that he would not lie. So because he will not lie, therefore he has to love me. And so that's the only reason why he loved me. Because he promised that he, he would love me. And that's what his character is. Try to convince him of that. And then he went on a little bit further. He said, you know, and I know he loves me because the word says he loves me, but I'm not really sure he likes me. Huh. How many of you know that the issue is this in many people's lives? The issue is that the enemy, how many of you know what the enemy is the accuser of the brethren? <laughs> The accuser will always remind us of every past sin, of every slip, of every failure. And he will tell you this. He will tell you God doesn't really love you. And that he really probably doesn't want to hang out with you. He doesn't even really like you. He may have loved you enough to die for you. But he, he, don't consider him your friend. How many of you know that the devil is a liar? Amen. And that's why you and I, sometimes we need to be reassured that if we have trusted in Jesus Christ, if we've confessed our sin, if we've turned from it, come on, is there anybody that says, you know something, I'm loved by the Lord, amen? He loved me when I was a sinner and He still loves me today. Come on. And that's why in this very passage, Jesus had to tell His disciples, John 15 and 3, it's a part of the same dialogue. He said this, He said, you're already clean because the word which I have spoken to you. And so a lot of people think that God doesn't love them or like them. Now here's a question for you. How many of you want to hang out with somebody that your mama told you you had to hang out with them and you know they don't really love you or like you? How many of you think I'm just, you're just not going to do it? Some of you are like, I'll do it. You're tough. All right. Well, let me tell you something. Part of abiding is understanding and growing into the assurance that God likes hanging out with you. Now, that has to be one of the most incredible 
theological truths of the entire system of theology, okay? And we used to say it like this and sing it like this in Sunday school. Jesus loves me. This I know for the Bible tells me so. Come on, if you could just get that down in your heart that He loves you. He's already made up His mind about you. The first thing of it is He loves you because you're a unique creation. There's nobody like you in all the earth. You're unique. Your fingerprints are unique. Your thought patterns are unique. And God is delighted in you. And not only did He create you, but guess what? He loved you enough that He gave His only Son. Come on. He redeemed you. Picked you up out of the miry clay. Come on, somebody. He purchased you back with the death on the cross. And another thing here, Jesus told His disciples. And by the way, not just His disciples. How many of you know we're His disciples? <laughs> Right? John 15, 9, he said this. As the Father loved me, get this, I have also loved you. Abide in my love. Wow. That's incredible. How many of you know that God the Father loved God the Son? That's the Trinity. That was a unity. That was a powerful thing. He, God said, Jesus said, as the Father loved me, that's what, how much I love you. He didn't just say that to Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. He said that to Bob and Jereen and whoever else. Amen. So you, excuse me, you need to settle it in your mind today. Excuse me, I should have swallowed that. Remember to edit that part when you put that up online. Amen. You need to settle it in your mind today. Write it down. God wants to be your friend. What happens that in our Western style rush to do and to perform for God, we often falter at the simple task of enjoying His company. But that's exactly what He wants to do. In fact, let me just expand your thinking a moment. How many ready to get your mind expanded today? All right, John 15 and 15, so He says this. He says, No longer do I call you servants, for a servant does not know what his master is doing, but I have called you friends. For all things that I heard from my Father, I've made known to you. This verse speaks of a deep relationship that we can have with God that is like being a friend. That's amazing, huh? Now, don't get me wrong. We're always going to serve the Lord. Does anybody want to serve the Lord? Yeah, we do. We want to serve the Lord. But let me tell you something. There's a place of abiding. There's a place where you hang out with. How many of you know who your friends are? Do you, have you ever figured this out? Your friends are the people you hang out with, okay? Those are your friends, right? They like you, you like them, you go together, you do. Okay, those are your friends. Okay, when you hang out with Jesus long enough, he says, you know what, man? You're just not my servant anymore. You're my friend. He'll start telling you things. He'll start revealing stuff to you. He'll start talking to you. He'll say, oh, come on. Somebody's got to get this this morning. I'm just here today to tell you it's a great thing. And when I think of friends, I don't think of Facebook. Oh, I got a lot of friends on Facebook. Some of them I don't even know. Never met them in my life. I got it from all over the world. I'm telling you, I do, because I put my articles out there and I got pastors from Pakistan and all kinds of places. They're my friend on Facebook, but, but you know, they're not, really, they're not really my friend. And I got to thinking about Facebook and Jesus. If, some of you are looking at me like, what's he going to say now? Okay. If Jesus was your friend on Facebook, if he was your friend on Facebook, I'm going to tell you how he would be, all right? He would write on your wall constantly, every moment of every day. Some of y'all know what I'm talking about, others of you don't. He would private message you things that only you are the one that's supposed to hear it. He would be interested in your status and comment on every status that you ever put up. If there was a like button, he would like it if he liked it. But if there was a dislike button, he'd also tell you about that. He would comment on everything. I read in the Reader's Digest about a lady who her mother was driving her crazy because she commented. She was the first one to comment. I mean, on every Facebook status that she ever had. And she's like, my mom's driving me crazy. Let me tell you something, that's the way Jesus would be. You want to know why? Because he's a real friend. He'd be right there. Come on. How many of you know that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother? Oh, some of you aren't getting this. I'm trying to tell you, Jesus wants to hang out with you. 
How many of you ever said, I'm just going to go hang out with Jesus for a while? Let me just sit at his feet for a while. Let me just praise him for a while. Let me just be with you. Have you ever said that to the Lord? I want to be with you. I'm shutting off the TV. I'm shutting off my phone. I'm, sh- I'm going out in the backyard and I'm going to sit here with my glass of sweet Texas iced tea. Come on. And I'm going to drink this iced tea and I'm going to be with Jesus for a while. Oh, amen. Hang out with Him. Abide with Him. And then the third thing you need to know is you need His Word. Oh, do you love the Word? Come on. Do I got any Word people in the house? Amen. Amen. I like people that bring their Bible to church. Steve Bress will scare you to death with his Bible. It weighs 62 pounds. It's got big old letters in it. But you know something? He carries it into church like this every Sunday morning. Flops it open. He almost needs two seats to open it up in the Sunday school class. Come on. Why? Because he's a word person. And what's interesting, there's a couple of verses that talk about abiding in the word. This is what one of them is in this passage. It says this, if you abide in me and my words abide in you. You will ask what you desire and it shall be done for you. I'm just here today to tell you that when you're in the Word and abiding in the Word, what happens is that your desires become the Word's desires and so what you pray about, all of a sudden you'll realize it's starting to happen. God's beginning to answer my prayer. I'm just telling you, every single believer needs the Word. You need to be in the Word every single day. Come on somebody. Be in the Word. And then it goes on to say this, By this is my Father glorified that you bear much fruit so you will be my disciples. I'm just here today to tell you when you're in the Word, your life is going to glorify Jesus. Amen. Amen. God speaks to us by the Word. He speaks to us by the still small voice of the Spirit. And the the more you know the Word, the more He can bring that still small voice. That's what I've come to grow and understand. And then another verse says this in John 8, 31, and I love this one. It says this, if you abide in my word, you are my disciples indeed. Indeed, you're my disciples. If you abide in the word of God and the word abides in you, you're his disciples. I don't know about you, but I don't want to be someone who believes in Jesus. Do you believe in Jesus, Pastor Bob? Absolutely, I believe in Him. He's my personal Lord and Savior. But let me tell you something. I'm not just a believer in Jesus. I'm a disciple of Jesus. Come on. Do I get any followers of Jesus? People that say, you know something, this book is not just something that I carry around on Sunday morning. It's my basic instruction before leaving earth. B-I-B-L-E. Basic instructions before leaving earth. That's an acrostic. Come on. It's what we need every Sunday single day to soak in it to read it to have a part of it amen and 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 i tell you i've 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 done the bible reading thing is there anybody that's read through the bible who's read through the bible in a year come on that's a beautiful thing to read through the Word of God, all the Word of God. I've done that so many. I've read through in English. I've read it through in Spanish. But let me tell you something. Uh, I, I don't read the Bible like that much anymore because I've taken up studying the Bible. <laughs> Amen. So what happens is I don't just have one Bible. You think Steve's bad. You got to come to my house on, on any morning. I got like three Bibles spread out, and I'm I got I'm writing in the margin, and I'm scribbling this, and I'm I'm looking it up in King James, and I'm looking it over here. And I, come on, that's what we need is to be in the Word like that. Because you know something, the Scripture says this: if you are in the Word, if you abide in the Word, you're going to be His disciples. All of a sudden, what happens is that Word gets down inside of you. It It changes the way you think. It changes the way you act. It changes the way you believe. Come on, somebody. Do you love the Word of God? It's a change agent. Amen. 